check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Rack of Lamb. As you guys may know, Lunar New Year is right around the corner. Last year, I shared a to die for crispy pork belly or cherry pesu yolk air fryer recipe. It's actually my best performing video thus far. So if you've got some time on your hands and you're hosting a New Year party with a family style meal, feel free to head over to my channel or rackoflamb.com for Asian dishes that may be suitable to your guests. On the other hand, if you're like me this year with both of your hands tied and ain't got no time to plan, then I would suggest doing Hot Pot. We refer to Hot Pot as Huo Guo in Mandarin and Fo Wo in Cantonese, literally translated as Hot Pot. We also casually refer to it as Da Bin Lo in Cantonese. In a nutshell, it involves cooking raw ingredients in a pot of simmering, flavorful hot broth. It's become extremely popular in restaurants and at home because it allows people to interact while cooking their own food. So don't invite people you don't want to be around with because you will be eating alongside them and sharing food that is coming out of the same pot. Anywho, hot pot does sound pretty effortless, right? But keep in mind, even though the cooking isn't on the host's plate, there is a lot of prep work that needs to be done before the hot pot party. So let's run those down. If you are planning to do hot pot for Lunar New Year or for a casual gathering, I would suggest heading straight to your local Asian supermarket where you'll be able to find a majority of the ingredients and the equipment that you'll need. First and foremost, you are going to need a pot. Traditionally, a dual-sided metal pot is used so that you can separate two variations of stock. But today, I will be using this granite stone hot pot from Masterstar, who was nice enough to send me this to try. I do like that this pot is non-stick, so you can use it to saute, sear, or even cook. And FYI, it did not come with this lid. I actually stole this from my dad because it fit perfectly on this pot. So the fact that this is made with granite stone and is dual sided, it allows you to have a side of stock for boiling your raw ingredients and the other side can be used to cook or stir fry. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. You're also going to need a portable burner where the pot is going to sit on. Butane burners like this one are my first choice because you can control the flame more easily and all you have to do is replace the fuel when it runs out. Now if you don't want to use a portable butane burner like this one, you can opt for an electric or induction burner as well. Now if you do want to use this, I'm sure you can find it at your local Asian supermarket, a kitchen supply store or Amazon. To use your portable burner, simply unlock it. Remove the lid from your butane. Place in your butane canister. Close the cover. Lock the canister in position. Then turn on the flame. Other tools you may need include strainers, tongs, chopsticks for communal and personal use, serving bowls, sauce dishes, and spoons. What's critical for hot pot is a soup base. If you've got the time to prepare your own, go ahead and do that. I don't, so I am going to opt for packaged ones. I went for these soup bases for hot pot. My favorite is the plain herbal one by Little Sheep, especially when it coats my udon noodles with the herbly aroma and flavors. If you're not a fan of these, head straight to the supermarket where they'll likely have a large selection of soup bases for hot pot. 
And now the best part. What kind of ingredients are we working with during a hot pot? I picked up a bunch from my last food shopping trip at my local Asian supermarket. So come join me and I'll show you what I got. You'll find a variety of fish balls at the Asian supermarket. I'm not going to try to list all of my favorites because there are so many, but I typically grab packaged fried fish balls and fish cakes. There's also a number of Asian sausages that you can choose from. These Vietnamese ones are so good. For hot pot, I also tend to load a bag full of unique frozen fish balls that are usually out on display. I highly recommend these with fish roe filling. And these Fu Zhao fish balls with marinated pork filling. And here's our bag full of fish ball assortments. If you're a meat eater, I'd also advise getting some sliced meats. These tofu puffs were on sale, so I picked up two bags. From the veggie department, I usually go for watercress, mushrooms, other green leafy veggies like mustard greens, scallions and cilantro for your sauces, and root vegetables like taro. Udon noodles are also a must. Stay tuned to see what I picked up from the seafood department. Dipping sauces are also essential for hot pot. There are pre-made ones you can pick up from the market, but I like concocting my own by combining staples like soy sauce, chili sauce, and this barbecue sauce that you must try if you haven't. This is it right here. We call this Sa Cha Zhang by Bullhead. I'm going to offer these sauces to my guests and allow them to get creative. As long as I have Sa Cha Zhang, I am covered. We've got a number of guests coming over for a hot pot party. The day of, I washed all the vegetables and laid out all the ingredients nicely on plates for ease of visibility and access. We also picked up some fresh seafood the same day, including fish, scallops, shrimp, and clams. I had the clams soaking for a few hours prior to our guests' arrivals. Likewise, our assortment of mushrooms were also washed, cut, and placed into a large dish. Right before we started hot potting, I began to put the soups together by bringing large pots of water to a boil and combining them with our packaged soup bases. The herbal soup base by Little Sheep went on one side, and the seafood soup by Lee Kum Ki went in the other. With that said, everyone was ready to dig in and had their individual sauces ready for a dip in. From my own dipping sauce, I simply combine some chopped cilantro, sa cha barbecue sauce, with some light soy sauce. I also like to add a raw egg, but given that I am prego, I had to avoid it. Our guests left our house with extremely stuffed bellies, and there was enough left over for the next day. Now you can see why Hot Pot is a good option for Lunar New Year. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video, and I wish you guys a very happy Lunar New Year. Fu
And if you guys like my video, make sure you give me that like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Mwah.